Hi, it's Mike from birdgazer.net and I'm going to show you some basic things you're going to need for painting a bird box. Uh, as you can see from the table, most of the stuff is pretty much generic and easy to obtain. Uh, let's start from this side. Right here we have a rag. You'll need a rag for cleanup. You can have a paint key to open your cans of paint, some gloves to keep your hands clean, and some brushes. Uh, I use a round brush here and a small brush and a foam brush to get a little bit more paint moving around. Uh, you can use whatever's most comfortable for you. I like the smaller brushes to be able to get detail. Now some water for cleanup and in between paint colors. And for the paints, I've chosen a red and a black. And what I'm going to do is either do the door one color like black and everything else red or vice versa, I'll do a red door and everything else black. Now, birdgazer.net boxes, as you know, are assorted wood sometimes because we produce and use what we get. So this door here is ash and it's a little rougher than normal. It's been feathered because of the uh, knots and um, the hard sections. Ash is very hard. The top is walnut, the sides is poplar, and the bottom is pine. So those particular woods are going to adhere paint differently. So after I do this, I'm going to let it dry and I'm going to go ahead and sand it down a little bit, knock the hairs down, and I'm going to redo it again. Okay, the next step we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm going to paint it. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, there you go. Fully painted. We're going to set that aside. And it almost looks like I could probably get away with one coat. I have to see how it is when it's dry. So I'm going to set this off over here for now. And make sure nothing's on my hands. It's not. Okay. Set the red aside. I'm going to get the black. Now, like I said, I'm just going to paint everything else black just to uh, give it a contrasting color. Red and black go together. Now, I'm going to probably do this. I am going to do this with a foam brush. I'm trying to drain some of that water out. So it doesn't, it's a good thing I have this rag here. Okay. Now, yeah, we're still stirred up. Open this up and begin. Now, I'm going to do whatever sides I can do that I can hold and then what we're going to do is I'm going to end up having something propped up behind it. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the top and get that done first. Actually, we're going to hold it like this and work kind of backwards into the sides. And this is really good acrylic paint so it's going on very nicely. I think also the uh, sanding has helped out so it's knocked off a lot of the hairs that would interfere with the brush action. An old painter always told me once, never keep brushing and run the paint out. So you always want to make sure there's plenty of paint on your brush and then it's going on your target area. Incidentally, the table was covered with cardboard. I cut a piece of cardboard to the exact size of the table, and that's kind of like my mess shield. You can use paper, newspapers, you can use plastic, anything that's good for keeping the mess under control and easy cleanup. Now it's going to start getting a little more tricky. suspended in midair. Easy enough to do. One of the beauties about painting, especially for outdoor use, will give the box a lot more life especially out in the weather. So, tighten it up and 
get many more years of service. And incidentally, uh, as my wife, as the website says, um, when you're done using the box, or in other words, your occupants fledge out and leave, and nobody else is taking use of it, take it down for the season. Bring it up next spring. Take it down in the fall, winter, and put it back up in the spring. That way you can bring it indoors and get it out of the weather. Make it last even longer. A lot of people leave their birdhouses up until they're at the point of collapsing. I don't think birds like that. Could be wrong, but practical point of view if your birdhouse is falling apart, it's falling apart. Black's going on very nicely. Especially make sure you get in the joint on the roof. Now jam up the joint and protect any leakage coming in. Not that it really matter because when it's a bare roof will get swelled up in the rain and kind of seal like a barrel. Grip it <clears throat> and position it. I'm also holding it so you can see on the video. set down so I can paint the sides and uh, move it off the table. Anyway, let's go ahead and do that. All right, with the top done, we're going to work on the sides. Now I've got a handy dandy piece of block of wood here and I'm going to use it to keep it up off the table so I can get around it. I'll do the back in another day. All right, we did black. We'll go ahead and open up the red and get started. shall I do first? Probably going to go do this first and work my way down and do the back. That will give me somewhat of an opportunity to just grip it like this. I think I'll try this brush. That's a nice little brush to hold on to. Alright. 
park that there, get the little brush, try to control my drips. Neat job. Okay, get a more light on the situation. Brush wet. A little boo boo there, but it's alright. That's what a rag is for. There you go. Alright, now let's try the other side. Flip it like that. Cut first up top here.
spot. Get close to being done. Fuzzy spots, you know, kind of dip the brush in. second coat. Turn, see if I missed anything, a couple of spots. Looks good. Just let that dry up. And it looks like it needs another cut, I'll put it, put it on. If it doesn't, yeah, looks good. And I'll do the back later, and that'll basically enclose it with um, paint and make it more durable and colorful, of course. All right, let's, um, let's do the front one more time and that would be uh, good to go. Alright, 
I got the front. I'll shove him off to the side. And as you can see, I sanded it, trying to knock down some of the hairs. This particular piece of wood is ash, and the box itself was poplar, walnut, and uh, I believe pine. So this should be a simple job. First coat usually seals the wood, knocks the hairs down when you sand it, so it's much more of a smooth surface, like paint. Switch over to the other brush. Get into the nooks and crannies. Clean it off a little bit, dry it up. And right into the nooks and crannies. more. All my stuff. That looks good. That'll weather very well. that really nicely and once again I just prefer not to put paint on where it slides make sure it doesn't get into trouble there you go we'll see you for the next video and we'll do something different see you later